What's up guys, welcome to the Fantasy Addiction Network. Today we're going to do a fun video. We're going to be looking at some preseason highlights together and also just picking apart what we've learned from the preseason, looking at the Vegas lines for win total and odds to win the championship today and breaking down what we think is more likely to happen for each team across the XFL. But hey, if you're looking for XFL and fantasy content, Click that like and subscribe button. We're going to be posting stuff every day throughout the XFL season, keeping you guys up to date on everything that's happening. So anyway, we won't waste any more time. Let's get started right away. All right, guys, as I said, we're going to be showing some highlights here, looking at those while we're also going to be talking about some of the latest news items and just overall Vegas lines that came out this week. Just going to be breaking down these guys team by team, and let's see what we can discuss here today. All right, so let's start with the Dallas Renegades. Now, when we talk title odds, we're going to be using a website called Bovada. Um, there's a few out there right now. I just chose that one because it, it seemed to be the one that more people are referring to. And then for the win total and the season opener line, we'll be using Caesars Entertainment. That seemed to be the most official one that I could find. So anyway, looking at the Dallas Renegades, they open with the best title odds right now at uh, plus 300. Um, and then a win, their win total right now is six. And then finally, their season opener line, they're uh, favored to win by six and a half points to the Battle Hawks. So uh, let's break down what we've learned in the preseason and see what um, you know see how that fits in with this narrative so Landry Jones we got news today that he's still hopeful to play in the season opener um, there's a definitely a chance for that to happen but he is saying if he can't make it to the season opener he's hoping to at least be back by week two so that should mean that we only get at max of one week of Philip Nelson as a backup do you think he's a capable backup but that would definitely hurt the Renegades' chances of beating the Battle Hawks in Week 1 if they didn't have Landry Jones. So getting him back would be a huge boost and uh, would definitely help support that win total. Uh, they still have a really nice complement of backs with Cameron Artis Payne leading the field. I still really like him to end up being the bell cow in this team. Bedette and Ferguson on the wide receiver core. They have that wide receiver 1-2 down on lock. And Donald Parham looks to be a huge playmaker in this offense. Even though Sean Price looks to be involved as well. And then the offensive line has shown that it can play well in both pass and run protection. So there's really not a weakness on the offensive side. And then on the defensive side, Frank Alexander on the defensive line could be one of the best pass rushers in the XFL. And there really isn't a true weakness on this team in general. Uh, defense probably maybe not quite as strong as the offense or as strong as some of the other defenses, but should still be top three or four. So, I mean, when you look at this team, they're probably one of the most well-rounded overall. So I definitely understand why they're opening with the greatest title odds. A lot of people are already picking them to win the championship. My prediction is they go 7-3. and three. I do think they have a great chance of winning the league. It's totally understandable to see them at only plus 300. All right, let's jump over to the DC Defenders. They're opening with title odds of plus 750 and a win total of 5.5. Um, they do have the same line opener as the Dallas Renegades of a minus 6.5 versus the Dragons. Uh, now, the latest news for the DC Defenders, the defensive coordinator Jeff Fitzgerald has resigned from the team, causing the team to promote uh, defensive backs coach Louis, I don't know how to say his last name, I believe, Siafi. Uh, now, this is definitely not the best news for team morale because um, whenever you hear news like this, you never really know why people are leaving. They're saying it's for family matters, and if that is definitely the case, you know, then you know, I hope that they're able to figure out whatever needs to happen. You know, thoughts and prayers got to him. But lots of times people use uh, family matters as like a cover up for something else that's actually happening. So I hope that's not the case. I really like the DC Defenders. I'm going to just go forward and give them the benefit benefit of the doubt because we haven't really heard any other negative press come out about them. Cardell Jones looks to be a star in this league at quarterback, and I think this will be a great chance for him to revitalize his career. That running back tandem of Jarrell Presley and Donnell Pumphrey are one of the best in the league. 
a trio of wide receivers with Rashad Ross, Eli Rogers, and DeAndre Tompkins, along with the tight end Kari Lee are insanely deep. And the secondary for DC looks to be one of the most robust in the league on defense. It's going to be really hard to beat this team unless we see that there are more internal implosions going on. So going through the week by week schedule, my prediction is that the DC defenders are going to end up at seven and three, meaning that I'd be you know pretty open to hitting the over on their win total of 5.5. I also think they have a pretty good chance of winning the league and at you know plus 750, they end up being a little bit more of a bargain than the Renegades, so um, I would definitely take the over on the 5.5. All right, let's jump over to the Houston Roughnecks. They also have title odds of plus 750, same as the DC Defenders, but in at Caesars, their win total is slightly higher at 6, and they're also favored to win their opener against the Wildcats. They have a minus 5 season opening line right now. So uh, there hasn't been any news yet on the quarterback situation. That's the last holdout of the quarterback battles in training camp for us to determine who the week one starters are. Uh, but personally, I don't think this team will really be hurt no matter who they go with. I think they'll be equally dangerous with, with both Cook and Walker. And I think Cook is the better passer, but he, he doesn't really give you that dual threat quarterback, which I think is going to be really important in the XFL. So I wouldn't be surprised if they went with Walker. Uh, because he definitely provides more of a dual threat you know, on the running game. However, just considering how much passing this team is looking to do, Cook might end up being the better fit. So we'll see. Hopefully we get an official update here within the next couple days. All right, looking at the running back core, there's definitely a lot of power backs here, not any real standout pass catching backs. Not that they can't do it. It's just not too many players on here with that as their specialty there's also no tight end on this team so it's a really interesting build on offense sammy Coates is my locked and loaded 101 in fantasy he's done nothing but impress all throughout training camp it's arguably the best talent profile of any offensive player in this league khalil lewis has also been impressing in camp at every turn so this offense is going to end up being built around four wide receiver sets so there's definitely going to be some other guys that should look to step up as well but it's entirely entirely speculative at this point to guess as to who so i believe that there's gonna be a lot of waiver wire additions in fantasy after we start getting a little bit of clarity there um, my main concern with the houston roughnecks is they don't really have too many standout players on defense overall which will most likely require them to score a lot more points again great for fantasy but not necessarily great for the team than set themselves so my prediction is that they will go four and six pretty close to vegas on this one i do think that houston's weaker defense and less diverse offense without you know true playmakers in the pass game at the running back and not having a tight end that's definitely going to hold them back from being as good as some of the other teams in this league but i think they carry enough unknowns i'd avoid making any bets for or against them so even though their win total is six i might be a little hesitant to pound the under just in case they end up getting a rhythm going and are better than we expect all right let's jump over to the los angeles wildcats title odds they're opening at 500 but their win total is four and they have a season opening line they're actually uh not favored to win their opener against the Roughnecks by five. So I'm a little bit surprised by the lower uh, title odds against, uh, you know, for LA with DC and Houston. There's just a different uh, algorithm that must be used on the site that Caesars has just because they're opening with a lower win total. And honestly, I've seen a lot of people kind of throw a lot of shade on the Wildcats. Um, there's still very little buzz for Josh Johnson, at least throughout the uh, social media news that's been going around. I still think they're just keeping him under wraps into this week, but if they randomly just start McClendon, I wouldn't necessarily be shocked. Uh, I would be disappointed because I think Josh Johnson is a lot better, but we'll see. I'm losing confidence in this team as we get closer to the season, but I'm really hoping that they can prove me wrong. Um, they do have a decently diverse running back set with Hood, Rose, and Harris. And definitely is going to see a committee, but I think they can get the job done from a football perspective. Katie Cannon getting cut this week opens the doors wide open for Saeed Black now to dominate. Nelson Spruce will look to be the XFL's Julian Edelman. And Trey McBride is a riddle that I just can't solve. He's either going to be completely irrelevant, which is my bet right now, or one of the best receivers on this team. After getting traded straight up for Rashad Ross, 
you know, there were rumors that he was even considering retiring and not playing in the XFL. So it's just complete conundrum whether or not he's going to be excellent or just non-existent on this team. But we'll see what ends up happening after week one. It's a very deep wide receiver course. So I don't think they necessarily need him, but we'll see if he stands out. And then Brandon Barnes at tight end could also shine as one of the best tight ends in the league. Has never really been given the opportunity in his career to show his chops as a pass catcher, but he should get plenty of red zone conversion opportunities in this league. Uh, but overall, just looking at this team, there's definitely a little bit of an identity you know, crisis here with um, everything that's happening with the quarterback. Hopefully, Josh Johnson ends up just being able to take over this team and can kind of, you know, show that this offense can be strong, but there's a few little mismatched pieces here and there and no true alpha at receiver. So, and then uh, LA is also looking to have, honestly, possibly the worst defense. I mean, everything's speculative right now, but I would say that LA's defense definitely looks to be the weakest of all eight teams in the XFL. So for that reason, I'm predicting them to go two and eight. That seems a little harsh, but someone needs to have a bad record for the other teams to have you know, a better record. So other than Josh Johnson, this team just doesn't look to have top strength in this league at any use, in any position. And then if Johnson isn't used, then well, damn. So nope, I'm not going to pound the under uh, at only four, but there's no way, ta no way I'm taking the over. So I'm probably just not betting on this team at all right now. All right, let's jump over to New York Guardians. Title odds right now at plus 400, but Caesar has their win total at four. And they're actually not favored. They're favored to lose against the Vipers uh, in their season opener. So, you know, with recent news with the addition of D'Angelo Yancey and Tanner Gentry to IR, that's definitely hurting the wide receiver depth on this team. But they should still be back before the season is over. They were placed on short-term IR. We don't know exactly the extent of the injury and how long they'll be on IR, but they should be back at some point. And then uh, Taylor Redding and Colby Pearson have already looked to step up to the plate and have done really good in training camp. And don't forget that Mikael McKay will be one of the best receivers in the XFL as well. So even with those additions to IR, they still have a pretty awesome wide receiver core. Matt McLean has looked awesome in camp, which is a bit surprising to me, but hey, I love to see it. And, you know, seeing him hit on some deep balls is definitely a good sign considering his lack of deep ball presence for the majority of his career. The running back duo of Cook and Darius Victor will provide some nice power while Justin Stockton should be the primary pass catching back, a good little balance there. And then EJ Bibbs uh, is being talked up as going to be the main pass catching tight end of the four on the roster, even though he hasn't done too much in the way of pass catching in his career. We'll see how he ends up getting used in the system. And then on the defensive side, the Guardians have the best secondary and linebacker core in the entire XFL and will look to be an extremely stingy defensive team. The defensive line leaves room to be desired, but passing is a more important aspect in this league so i think their strengths will outplay their weaknesses and the guardians could easily have the best defense in the xfl my prediction for them is seven and three so at their win total of four i would pound the over for the win total i also think plus 400 is a decent shot for title odds as well uh, but definitely that over under win total of four makes no sense to me when you look at the roster construction that they built in new york and yeah that's pretty much it for them. Uh, let's jump over to the St. Louis Battlehawks. Title odds of plus 900, one of the worst, and then win total of only 3.5. They are favored to lose by 6.5 points to the Renegades in Week 1. So latest news here, Jordan Tayamu was given the starter role today. As we predicted, pretty excited about that. I think that's great news for the team. I think he definitely gives them that extra dimension at quarterback of being able to run the ball as well. And he's a pretty darn good passer in his own right. So overall, I think that was a smart move on their part and I think that will help them. And then from a running game perspective, they got a nice tandem between Christian Michael and Matt Jones. I like Michael a lot more, but I do think that Matt Jones will be involved and they should be you know pretty diverse at the running back position the receivers are a bit more interesting to break down but i really like ladamian washington as a lead receiver he's that big bodied guy who jordan tayamu is pretty used to working with alonzo russell should be a nice sleeper and then keith mumphrey could end up being on the fantasy radar soon enough with his deep playability and then demorne pearson l is there as well looking to at least help produce for the team maybe not so much for fantasy on the tight end side, Cole Hunt was the lone survivor at tight end through the roster cuts. They ended up signing another 
tight end after the cuts, but he's looked great overall. The head coach, Jonathan Hayes, is an ex-tight end coach from the NFL, so look for Hunt to be a big part of the game plan. The Battlehawks are projected to be pretty average on defense. They don't necessarily stand out as a top group, but they're also not terrible. Um, so the fact that they're not a top group is definitely going to hurt them a bit, but I'm still pretty excited for this team overall. I do think they definitely have a chance to be a lot better than I'm predicting, but my prediction right now is that they'll go 4-6. and six. I'm hoping that they do better. I actually really like this team. I think that they have you know, a lot of players that I can support and get behind. So I'm really hoping that they do better than my prediction. But again, right now I have them at four and six. So having to play both the defenders and the guardians twice, you know, having four of your 10 games against two of the top teams in the league kind of sucks being in that division, but I'm not going to make any bets on this team as they really are a wild card at this point. All right, let's jump over to the Seattle Dragons. This one is honestly surprising me the most with the Vegas Lions. Uh, right now, their title odds are the worst at plus 1,100, or best, I guess, in terms of uh, payout if you ended up winning. And their win total is 3.5, so same as the Battle Hawks. And they're also a favorite to lose against the defenders in week one. So we got some news this week that Brandon Silvers was named the starting quarterback. A little bit of a surprise here as we were kind of expecting them to shift over to BJ Daniels, but I'm glad at least we have some clarity now. But just because Brandon Silvers is the starter, I'm pretty sure that they're still going to use BJ Daniels to so look for this to be kind of like a quarterback by committee or like a two quarterback system that you would see in college. I hope that Brandon Silvers gets to throw the ball the majority of the time because it's hard to get a rhythm going when you're playing two quarterbacks, but we'll see what ends up happening. Uh, I really do like uh, Coach Jim Zorn, though. I think he has a great uh, command of the locker room, and I think that he'll you know, end up having one of the more disciplined squads in the XFL. Uh, the running backs, Kenneth Farrow and Jaquan Gardner, should prove to be one of the best one-two punts tandems at running back. And the receiving core in Seattle leaves... A, leaves room to be desired especially from a fantasy perspective but there's a lot of depth here so i don't think it's going to end up being a crutch for them they have you know plenty of guys to go to it's just probably not going to be the same guy you see performing every single week and uh, seattle also looks to have one of the better defensive backs and secondaries in the league so overall they are you know decent at all the places that matter in this league and I'm really surprised at these Vegas odds. They look a bit ridiculous to me. My prediction for Seattle is that they go 6-4. and four. So at the win total of 3.5, I'm pounding the over for them. Plus 1,100 for the title odds is ridiculous, even though I don't know that I'd take it because I think that either New York, D.C., or Dallas will end up winning the championship. But I do think that Seattle has uh, the fourth best odds of making the playoffs. So if you can make the playoffs, you're getting pretty close to the title. That's a pretty tempting bet right there but overall definitely pound the over there I, I don't think they're going to have that much difficulty getting to four wins all right final team let's jump over to the tampa bay vipers their title odds are plus 500 and their win total oh my gosh seven and a half remind you guys there's only 10 games so in order to win on the over the vipers would have to go eight and two we now those odds were set before we got the news today that Antonio Callaway, uh, who had come over from the Cleveland Browns, he suffered a nasty leg injury in practice Wednesday afternoon. He had to get carted off the field. We don't know the full extent of the injury yet, but it sounds like it's going to be pretty devastating and will likely keep him out probably for the whole season, but we'll hopefully find some more information out soon. Uh, but again, keep in mind these lines were set before that, so that they may change. But overall, even if that hadn't happened, I'm really still really shocked at these odds here. Aaron Murray is an okay quarterback, but I definitely think Quentin Flowers is going to end up being XFL's version of Taysom Hill, or even looking back further, like Tim Tebow, and I think he's going to end up being pretty dominant. Uh, Devian Smith and, and uh, Flowers, who, like I said, is like Taysom Hill, is also going to be used as a running back. I think they're going to end up being a pretty good running back tandem. Tandem. Now, without Antonio Callaway, look for Sean Tavis Jones and Stacey Coley to be the main receivers here with Nick Truesdale 
the tight end who they drafted in the first round of the skill position draft to lead the league in tight end yards. This team overall has a pretty good offense, and they have an offensive mining coach in Mark Trestman, who I believe in a lot, but their defense looks pretty weak all around. The defensive line and secondary are are not that incredibly impressive, and overall, like maybe not as bad as the LA Wildcats defense, but Tampa Bay, I would say, is projected to be at least sixth, maybe seventh in terms of overall ability to stop opposing teams. So anytime you have a team with a bad defense, yes, there's probably a lot of points scored and they have a good offense to be able to keep up with other teams, but I don't understand why there would be a 7.5 win total on a team with a bad defense. So maybe there's just something that I'm missing here, but this seems like of all the bets that we talked about today, the easiest one to pound the under. Uh, my prediction is that the Tampa Bay Vipers go 3-7 and seven in the inaugural season, but even if they win a few more than that, again, they'd have to win 8 for you to lose your bet. So I think that's the safest one to make right now. Those win totals will probably drop pretty soon, especially after the news with Antonio Cowley going down that may have already dropped. But I haven't seen that news come across the wire yet. All right, guys. So breaking that down, that would give us the two best teams in the East of the DC Defenders and the New York Guardians, both at seven and three. And then in the West, that would give us the Dallas Renegades at seven and three and the Seattle Dragons at six and four. If that is the playoff result, then I would project that the DC Defenders end up winning the East and the Dallas Renegades win the West. Between those two teams, I'm really hard pressed to determine the winner. If I had to put money on it, I would go with Dallas, but I do think that would be a really good game assuming health. So overall, those are my predictions for the inaugural 2020 season. So anyway, that's uh, what I have for you guys today. So um, as I mentioned before, we're going to be posting stuff for the XFL and for fantasy every single day. So hit that like and subscribe button for more content. And if you guys are looking for rankings, uh, trade values, start sets, all the go all that good stuff that you need to be able to manage your fantasy leagues, I got that all for you in our season companion. Just click the link in the description and you can sign up for that. It's free this year. Didn't want, want anyone to you know, be left out in the cold for the XFL. There's a lot of uh, unknowns going on right now so you know join me on that journey and figuring out the best players to start each week but anyway thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video